All right, so this video is going to be covering a training mode LUA for Final Burn Alpha RR. Um, now, the original creator, Groflon, is a French player, but he stopped actually supporting this and updating it back in May, for whatever reason. So we're going to be using a different version by Lovely Kittens of Fightcade, um, Board Kittens on GitHub. Now, it's the same copy-paste of their... Uh, beginning of the code thing because this is a fork so basically you have to make sure that you have the right version of final burn alpha rr so it'll bring you to this website click the top link and then uh, you'll open it up you'll take all this crap you put it in a new folder and then you're done then you're going to want to do uh, download the training lua master and to do this, you go back to GitHub, you click on code, and then you click on download zip, and then you're done. You open it, open this, take all this crap, put it in the main, <clears throat> the main folder for, uh, for your emulator. You know, take your ROMs that you need, put them in here as well, and uh, then you're pretty much done. And now let's uh, get into actually what this does. All right. So like I said before, this is created by Lovely Kittens, and it adds weighting to the recording settings. Um, now, this is important because all recordings in this actually have the weighting added to the um, JSON file. So you have to have two separate folders if you want to use older versions of Grofalon's training mode and you need the older versions if you want to practice uh, links like far stand medium punch super from Ken because it's not a actual cancel and the reason for this is because between his version 5 and version 6 uh, there was a little bit of a mess up and in version 6 he added a lot more frame data for uh, you know blocking and stuff so you need to use version 6 for most things, but you can use version 5 for uh, hit confirm stuff that require links and not cancels. So anyway, main menu, left and right, pose, normal, crouch, jumping, super jumping, block style, never, always, first hit, random. So, never, always, first hit, random. Same thing for parry. And then red parry doesn't work with any of these because it always considers it blocking uh, no matter what. If you have it on first hit, it doesn't really matter. Anything past this, if red parry's on, matters. Or it doesn't matter. So red parry, so it works, hits before the red parry. So if you're one, two, three, it's two hits. If you wanted to parry the second hit, one hit. Zero hits is not an option. Um, tech throws. Always. Random and never. Attack moves. Forward, back, down, up, quarter circle forward, quarter circle back, half circle forward, half circle back, DP forward and backwards, horizontal charge, vertical charge, 360, double quarter circle forward, aka supers, 720, back dash, forward dash, uh, demon, and I believe this is KKZ. Now you have recording, which we'll get to in a little bit. So light punch, medium punch, heavy punch, EX punches, light kick, medium kick, heavy kick, EX kicks, throw, universal overhead, personal action. So if we set him to throw, we set him to always block, he will throw me out of my 1-2-3 attempts. But if it's a frame trap, he will get hit. So it's pretty pretty simple. Training options. Oh, and uh, fast recovery is quick rise. 
always, random, and never. So if you're practicing set play, you would want to have it on uh, random so that you can figure out exactly what you want to do based on if your opponent does or does not quick rise. And it also shows you if your uh, Okizeme stuff is vulnerable if they don't quick rise to uh, being thrown during your next action or as a recovering from your next action. Infinite time. Life refill mode. If you have it for refill, this is the uh, delay in frames before it will actually reset. Disable stun, yes or no. If you want uh, to practice 100% stun, you can put it on no. Refill meter, normal, refill, and infinite. So refill here is very important. You can put, as an example, Yun only has one super bar, and this is done by the amount of actual pixels or uh, whatever of meter. So then you can change Ken to be about here, and this means that you can practice DED. Meter refill delay is the same as uh, life refill delay. Infinite super time, so if I do this, yes, and I will be in Ganejin forever. So if you want to practice recovery canceling into crouching light kick forever, you can do that if you so desire. However, I don't suggest practicing that. Um, display input. Very rudimentary one, not quite like the one on the video that you're seeing on the left, which is an OBS plugin. And then hitboxes. Um, blue is the hurt box, green is the throwable box, and then uh, the actual, when you press a button, you can pause and then use the period key to go frame by frame. And as you see here, there is a red box now, and that is where the opponent will get hit. And the uh, cyan box, essentially, ends up being a hurt box for your normal. So if we take a look here, if I press uh, medium punch again, let me go frame by frame. Yun's hit box is higher than the hurt box. So it will hit opponents that are above the hurt box, but it can be hit low, like lower than his uh, thing, et cetera, et cetera. And there's a very small area in here, which uh, if somehow your move doesn't hit down here, but hits here, won't actually hit him. So you can look at all the funky frame, frame stuff that you want. And now uh, music volume is important because you can set the music volume and this is independent of the um, sound volume. And volume control is done inside of input. Configure hotkeys and down towards the bottom. The configure hotkeys thing is required if you want to actually change the sound of how loud something like Yen's activation or a DP or any other sound is in the game. So now let's take a look at recordings. Crop first frame, yes or no? Crop first frame means that it takes one frame off of it baseline. Replay mode. Normal mode means it will just repeat what you have. Random means it will repeat between all of your slots. Repeat will repeat the slot that it's currently on. Random repeat will constantly repeat between slots 1 and 8. So let's record some stuff. To do this, you double tap on player 1 start. It'll say waiting for recording. And then you tap start again when you want to end the recording. So if we do normal, this will only do dash up 1, 2. If we do random... You have to press it every single time. So now we have repeat. This will just constantly do this. So if you want to practice red parries. You get the idea. And then repeat random.
You get the idea. So, um, now waiting. When you have repeat random on, waiting matters. Or if you have repeat random on. So, if you have them both at 1, they will be equal waiting. If you change slot 2 to, let's say, waiting 3, you're going to get uh, strong fierce much more often than you would crouching short short. Now, counterattack delay. This can be positive or negative. So if you mess up your recording and you need it to be a couple frames earlier or a couple frames later, you don't actually have to re-record. You can use this functionality to change that. However, um, it's probably in your best interest to try to record things as close as possible to uh, the actual frames it should be. And then you have uh, standard deviation, meaning that it will do things at uh, random intervals within one or two st standard deviations, aka this counterattack delay, um, of that thing. So if you have counterattack set to Dragon Punch, and then you have counterattack delay, which also works on the stuff inside of the dummy settings, set to specific things, standard deviation, if you set it to one, It'll go either two frames later or two frames earlier, etc., etc. If you want to clear your slot, functions like this. Slot 2 is now gone. Then you can save the file. And this goes into your... Um, data. I'm sorry, not data. Uh, saved into recordings. As you can see, there's nothing here right now. Let me just uh, pull this down a little bit so I don't have to change the screen. So, saved recordings, there's nothing here. So now let's uh, hit LP to edit. Left and right, change the, the aspect of this. So let's just call it J, for whatever reason. Um, and now Light Kick leaves the file name. You go down to save, Light Punch to save it. And as you can see here, it now shows up as JSON, JJSON. Um, and you can rename them whatever you want after the fact, so I do suggest doing that yourself rather than using the lettering system in here, as it's a pain in the ass. And then if you want to load, um, you know, load file, reset to default. There's left and right to figure out the files. So let's copy-paste this. Um, and we will name it uh, JJA. So now if we load from slot, J and JJA show up. Pretty simple. So that's pretty much the menus, and now let's talk about how you can use different things. Alright, so I'm going to show you how to do different options on Wake Up. Now this is going to vary depending on the move that you're using and if you're doing a combo and all sorts of other crap. Because this thing can be a piece of shit, to be honest. Um, now, we have set our counterattack action to recording. We change our recording settings so that it is randomized for replay mode. And then we have four different choices. So, I throw Ken. I stand in his face. He wakes up with crouch short. Throw Ken. Wake in his face. Medium punch, fierce punch. You get the idea. So, what happens if we only use medium punch, fierce punch, because we know that this can beat throw if timed correctly? Oh, I threw him didn't work. This is what counterattack delay is for. You can go up or down. So let's go down. Let's do, I don't know, negative 12. Didn't work. So now I have negative 13. Negative 14. 
Negative 15. Beats my throw. Every time. So, fine-tuning this is very important. But it also depends on what normal or, you know, attack you're using. So if I just dash punch him, and I try to do this, great. But as soon as I add crouching medium kick, as you can see in the top right corner, it plays a lot faster. So you have to change your counterattack delay. Let's try four. It still plays too fast. Let's try 21. Works here. It doesn't work here. Nope, plays too fast. Twenty-four. If I do late timing for the cancel, it works. But if I do early timing for the cancel, it doesn't work. Now, as you can see here, he's still waiting too long. But if I go to 23 frames, he does it too fast. So there are some things that it's very hard to test after. So you have to vary what you're timing and figure out how you have to test it. So if you want to do short, short dash punch, you have to realize that the dash punch is what you're testing off of and only do the dash punch. And I'm not sure how this applies to other characters because I don't play other characters and haven't done a whole lot of testing for other characters, but that's how it works here. So let's set this back to zero. So the same thing happens with DP. Right? Where if I do this, he tries to DP too fast. So let's set the delay to 23. Still too fast. And it delays too much after he gets up. So it doesn't quite understand how to do this. I don't know how to change it as far as programming goes, but it may be something that someone else can figure out in the future, since the main guy that works on this is no longer working on it. But for now, you're just going to have to figure out exactly how you want to do things. Because as you can see here, if I do a 1, 2, 3, Ken starts trying to do something right in the middle of it. So it's not going to work. It's easiest if um, they're set to block and always block and stuff. So doing things on block is a lot easier. So on knockdown is not as easy. Pretty simple. All right, so let's practice guard jump. Let's clear the slot. Clear the slot. Clear the slot. Let's go back to recording. So I'm going to dash. I'm going to throw. I'm going to do medium, medium punch, fierce punch. I'm going to dash. I'm going to throw. I'm going to walk back, walk forward, throw. And then I'm going to... Oops. Dash. Throw. Walk back, walk forward, medium punch, fierce punch. So let's clear this slot. Oops, wrong thing. So let's make sure that it works correctly. So this should be meaty. All right, so that is meaty. Now let's make sure that we can jump this pretty easily. As you can see here, he delays his target combo enough to hit the guard jump. So, now you have it put on random. So I'm able to block, 
unable to jump his throws, and I get hit by the slightly delayed medium punch fierce punch out of the startup of my jump. Alright, so let's do it off of Makoto's dash punch. Oh, I missed my guard jump. Standing medium punch takes too long. It's six frames of startup. So it's going to hit me on the way up or hit me out of the beginning of my jump frames, depending on when I do it. And as you can see here, the guard jump works for the crouching light kick into Hayate. So this is another situation where you can use this. Um, if you were to add something like uh, sweep, Because it's too slow, it'll end up uh, allowing you to jump. So, But this is also a choice that Makoto's do go for, so it's important to have inside of your decisions. So you can practice all sorts of different ways to guard jump and off of all sorts of different situations, uh, as long as you get creative with figuring out exactly where and how you want to do it. All right, so now let's talk about using this training mode to practice option parries. Now, option parries are usually done in situations where you are negative, right? So Yun's negative one after crouching medium. Parry. So option parrying down makes sense. You're in range of sweep and you're in range of crouching medium kick. You're also in range of um, fire stand roundhouse. But fire stand roundhouse, as an example, starts up a little bit slower than everything else. So you can down parry and then block, right? Parry block. So you can practice all sorts of option selects like this using this method. However, um, as you're seeing, if he's hit once with something, he'll do something, right? But if he blocks a chain combo, or some chain combos are not programmed correctly to be blocked, um, he gets hit, right? Or he just doesn't do his crouching medium kick. So this exists for basically every character that can chain their normals together. Or you have to add a slight delay just to get it to be the same spacing or whatever so that you can make it work. It's a little bit frustrating, but that's just how this training mode works, and it's not consistent. So, you know, for a gun, you can do crouching legs and leg kick, and then down parry. Right? You can do uh, far side medium punch down parry, you know, or forward parry or whatever. And this is all practice. You can practice this all based on matchup. So if you think that your opponent wants to DP after you, you know, do whatever, you can also practice that by doing DP forward and then changing it to uh, let's just do heavy punch. Where it's interrupting my short short. You get the idea. So no matter what you do, you can practice your opponent doing whatever decision that you think they may do. They may try to throw you out of the But let's say Ken tries to do back throw. We'd have back, and then we'll have light punch light kick. Well, I got thrown. I'm out of range of thrown. So this means that, you know, if I option parry down after this, I can punish. So, the, you know, the concept exists no matter what. You can practice it off of jump-ins, you can practice it off of whatever. So if you want to practice frame traps off of jump-ins, or if you want to practice, you know, option parrying after jump-ins, you know, all of that stuff works just as well. So just remember that it's single hit, and this also works just the way that it would be working off of knockdown. And like I showed before, it's the same thing on parry. 
you can make him, you know, throw on parry, or you can make him, you know, back and then it's just say medium punch, right? <laughs> Always do the thing that you want them to do. Alright, so the other thing is, no matter what you do, if you are using a recording, then your opponent will not do the thing that you have them programmed to do on counter hit, because it, or on counter attack, because it is not part of a recording. Um, so even if you change, you know, the counter attack delay or whatever, He's not going to do the crushing medium kick that I have him set up to do. So it can become a little bit frustrating to practice sort of these things in neutral or whatever. So you're going to have to figure out how to replicate situations in another way. All right, so let's do some randomized dash practice. I haven't done this in a while, so my reactions are going to suck. However, um, let's do this on normal. Ken does dash short short with crouching medium kick. Oops. And then he also has dash short short dash throw. Since it was randomized and it picked the correct one, cool. So now we're going to do random repeat. Oh, was a little too slow. Too slow again. Tech. Oops. Punish. Tech. Punish. Oops. Punish. So you get the idea. You can you can practice dash punishes pretty efficiently with randomization. And this applies to every other character in the game. So if you want to have Makoto do neutral jump medium kick and then forward dash throw, or neutral jump medium kick and then dash back Hayate, or neutral jump medium kick, neutral jump Tsurugi, or whatever combination you want to do, there's no limit, like whatsoever. Alrighty, so now that you have XPatter, run it as administrator, click on new, go to buttons, hit your coin, and then hit another button of your choosing. That button is going to be done so that it uh, reloads your state, and so that it also um, does the replay functionality. So first button is going to be the coin button, you're going to want to put that as one. And then the second button, you're going to go to advanced. And then you're going to press F1. You're going to click this little time thing for a pause. It adds a baseline 20 seconds, or 0.2 seconds. Click this to make it 0.3. And then after that, we're going to want to make it do the coin so that it does the replay. Pretty simple. Now we exit this, open this, unpause it. Now when I press my button, it loads, and it does a replay. Pretty simple. Alrighty, so let's uh, talk about the Dagger Whip Runners practice. So the way that he does it is that he has his opponent neutral jump, whiff something that cannot be whiff punished. Then he has them whiff punish something that can be whiff punished. And then maybe one or two more things. So for Ken, you could have him do max range sweep. So you could block it, or as Yun, you could whiff punish it, or block punish it, I should say, with a uh, micro-step forward Kara dash punch, which is very difficult. Um, and you could also add dash, or another button of your choice, like far stand medium punch, or whatever. But we're going to keep it simple. I'm going to do this for about a minute, and uh, that'll be the explanation. So using the thing from x pattern. And I 
I missed my dash punch. So the other thing is you can, you know, walk back and forth and also work on whip punishing like that, right? But for the most part, you just want to be looking for the whip up first before you add the other layers, if you so desire. So the other thing you could do as Yun is neutral jump and look for the crouching medium kick as a way to dive in. Or, you know, Yang or whoever. So, you can use this as ooh, a whiff punish tool with crouching medium kick, if you really want to, at this range. Um, or you can do the dash punch, or you can do a dive kick, whatever it is that you want to do. Um, you know, this is universally applied by a lot of different characters, like Ken doing crouch forward super, or Chun-Li doing crouch forward super, or whatever. Um, you know, you can use this as Yun to decide if the opponent's going to be doing standing fierce, and then whiff punishing that with dash punch, or, you know, whatever. There's tons of different opportunities in this game to practice whiff punishes, and especially as the higher tier characters, you know, whiff punishes are really important. Alright, so neutral. This is really, really hard to quote-unquote script because having eight versions is not enough. So after this, I'm going to actually show you how to increase that if practicing neutral is something you really want to do. Um, it's very hard to make it so that it's human-like, so I suggest having very specific things that you're looking to work on, whether it's your opponent walking in and out of range, you walking in and out of range. Um, you can have your op opponent press more or less buttons. It's completely up to you how you want to approach it. But this is using the uh, repeat random function. So this is one of those usages. So when I press go, he's going to walk at me. And then if he gets cornered like this, you know, I can always stop it with by pressing coin and then starting it again like this. You can always walk out of the, or jump out of the corner as well. So obviously it's not natural because of the crushing light kicks, but if you're looking for, you know, actual neutral stuff, um, it's going to be very hard to mix things up enough to where if he does get close to you, um, there are a lot of decisions that can be made. But you can also work on, you know, like, confirms. You can work on confirms inside of Ganagin. Whatever it is that you want to work on. Staying at max crushing medium kick range, where you're looking for whiff punishes. Bad kicks, whatever it is that you want to practice. There is a way, as long as you script it. So a lot of times you're going to get hit by this. Or you're going to parry it and then try to punish it. And you're just going to get supered anyway. So this is how you deal with that. Where you block long enough to have the super come out. And as you see there, even though I pressed crouching medium kick, it didn't come out. So you do it during your block animation. So that's the timing that you want to be doing your crouching medium kick. 
is where you're allowing your opponent to waste their super. So we also have Ken set up to do crouching medium kick nothing. So as you can see there, if you delay, you get a full punish. Usually when Ken is moving his foot back. So simple concept. Use the random function as opposed to random repeat. And then use the X patter tech. You can also just miss your parry too. the idea. So this is very useful against Ken and Chun, and it can be useful against other characters that like to do uh, buffer moves into super. Like, Dudley can do crouching medium punch confirms, technically, um, even though usually it would be crouch medium punch duck super. But, you know, some other characters have some specific choices that they can make, where you parry and then you can block for an extra second before you make a decision to punish. And that's pretty much the gist of it. Okay, so to get more recording slots, it's pretty easy. You search for recording underscore slots, and then it should be line 513, and then 4 underscore equals i equals 1, and then 8. 8 is the maximum. So you would change this to, let's say, uh, 12. Save. And now let's reload the LUA script. Let's unpause. Twelve. Easy. All right. So now let's talk about actually making proper recordings. So you can do it by hand, or you can do it by frame by frame stuff. So it's pretty simple to do. Let's do it for uh, Ken's medium punch, fierce punch, like we were talking about earlier, where the goal is to get it so that it interrupts throw after a knockdown. So we're going to get ready, and then we're going to hit coin and then pause immediately. So what you're going to do now is you're going to use the period to go forward frames. So it takes 9 frames to 10 frames, depending on when you actually pause, to get your recording. So usually what I'll do is I'll wait 3 frames, and then I'll press the button that I want. So frame uh, 3 for medium punch, I hold medium punch, I hit next frame. Okay. Now I want fierce punch 2 frames later, so hold medium punch again, now I hold fierce. Let's see how that worked. So, too early. So now we do it again. So now we hit the record. Now it's on frame two. Now it's on frame three. Medium punch. Now it's coming out. Now it's active on frame 10. Now. Okay. So now we unpause, stop the recording. So now what we're going to do is we're going to play that back under the normal, normal function, and then we're going to see exactly how many frames we need to cut it back for it to work. So, throw. Okay. So, recording settings. Let's go uh, back delay, negative three. Okay. 
for it. So that's all that we need was four. So you basically do one frame before you start your uh, your thing. So I started my attack on frame four, and negative four frames is what it took to make it so that it uh, it works. I didn't auto crop the first frame like I should have, but uh, if I do, then uh, let's make it three. Yep. So if I auto crop first frame and I do three like it was supposed to be, then uh, that works as well. So it's a pretty simple concept. Uh, this can be done for everything, and everything must be done at least one frame after one another. So let's say that I'm Yun. Um, if I want to do Dash Punch, uh, I will need to pause and then do down for one frame, and down forward for one frame, then forward for one frame, and then punch. Because if I do it any faster than that, it's not going to work. Like, realistically, there's no way to program anything faster than three frames. Um, yeah, so you get the picture. Uh, everything in the game can be done this way. It can just be a pain in the butt to actually set up. 